In the space industry, predicting the development speed of a project is often quite challenging, but SpaceX with its Starship rocket has broken all those stereotypes. SpaceX has chosen a completely different path from traditional approaches. Instead of proceeding cautiously step by step, they set some seriously ambitious goals, continuously breaking limits and achieving awesome milestones. Astonishingly, after only five test launches in just 19 months, SpaceX officially announced plans to increase the Starship launch frequency to twice a month. According to Elon, this number could be even higher. The rapid development pace of a vehicle still in the testing phase, like Starship, is not only surprising but has left NASA in awe. All will be revealed in today's Alpha Tech episode. Although it's only undergone five test flights, with the sixth one coming up, SpaceX is confident in a new goal for 2025, launching Starship every two weeks, meaning the Starship could hit 25 launches next year, a figure five times greater than what they're expected to get done in 2024. Is this challenging? I think it's incredibly ambitious. But if SpaceX dares to promise it, then I dare to believe it. And if you think the same, don't hesitate to comment yes. This goal was recently updated by Kathy Luters, general manager of Starbase. During her talk at Con Ace's 2024 conference, she shared, I mean, Elon would say next year he would love to have us have 25 missions a year. Wow. And, and in the next few years, 100. And the other day he was telling me, Kathy, I would love to launch a couple of times a day. So yeah. I don't know. Big dream. Indeed. For Elon, the visionary himself, the aim is to reach an unprecedented launch cadence for Starship. In a post on X, he even responded, we will be much faster than that, suggesting there could be another leap forward in the coming year. Not only 25 launches, but potentially 26, 27, even 30 Starship launches. It's definitely something to look forward to. Eventually, we may see Starship launching as frequently as Falcon does right now, transforming Boca Chica from a relatively quiet site to one buzzing with activity. Of course, with 25 launches, SpaceX will also need 25 landings of the Super Heavy booster and possibly even the upper stage Starship. SpaceX has already requested permits from the FAA to support these Starship flights as of June, hoping the FAA's reviews won't face the delays seen in past investigations, especially now that we have a new president, Donald Trump. In addition to increasing launch frequency, commenting on the historic Starship Flight 5 Tower catch, Luters highlighted the importance of recovering the booster as it allowed SpaceX to capture footage of the Starship landing as well as collect valuable thermal data on the vehicle. While catching the Super Heavy booster with the tower is a significant accomplishment, it's even more critical to catch the upper stage Starship. Although the booster is bigger, the upper stage descends from a higher altitude, making it riskier, posing greater potential for damage to the launch pad or nearby areas if issues arise. At the end of her talk, when asked about the timeline for catching the second stage starship of the tower, Luters mentioned that an attempt could be made in 2025, emphasizing the importance of upcoming flights, including Flight 6, November 18th, describing them as essential for understanding the flight dynamics of the upper stage starship. According to her, we need to be certain we can fully control an orbital vehicle before committing to an orbital launch. As a result, the next few missions will focus on perfecting this. If these missions go well, Luters expressed hope that the company could achieve this goal within the next six months. So if they go well, we would love for it to be in like the next six months. So far, there's been a lot of interesting rocket science, but why should we care about this? After all, it's just Elon's rocket company so far. Starship's just this giant stainless steel tube that's yet to reach orbit, let alone launch any satellites. The thing is, SpaceX is setting a big-time example here for the fast-growing commercial space business. By upending traditional slow, expensive, step-by-step -step rocket production methods, SpaceX is racing ahead of its rivals. For example, Amazon's Jeff Bezos' rival rocket company, Blue Origin, was founded two years before SpaceX was. And while it's seen some success with its small passenger-carrying New Shepard rocket, this is a technologically simple vehicle that doesn't get to orbit. Blue Origin's bigger New Glenn rocket's been in development hell for years now, and its maiden flight was recently delayed enough that an important NASA research payload got pulled from the flight manifest. Meanwhile, space industry veteran Boeing is facing so many issues with its Starliner space capsule program that reports say the company's considering selling this part of its operation, minimizing its risk of losing any more money through Starliner launch issues. All of this is a tremendous endorsement for thinking like a startup while maintaining the status of the world's most renowned 
rocket company. This is a fantastic example we should follow. One of the most anticipated capabilities of Starship is reusability. With such potential soon to enter the market, it's time to prep for Starship's impact on the space economy. The full reusability of Starship will dramatically reduce launch costs, meaning that it's possible to consider new types of activity in space that simply weren't viable technologically or were too expensive with past launch architecture. Most of the applications are civilian, but possible military applications include launching surveillance and other satellites more cheaply, and therefore in greater numbers, and even urgent delivery of large payloads across Earth with suborbital flights. Once SpaceX achieves the capability for Starship to take fuel from others in orbit, a single mission will be able to deliver up to 100 metric tons or 100 people to the Moon, Mars, and potentially beyond. The cost to launch matters. Only the first stage of SpaceX's existing Falcon launcher returns for reuse. Yet that rocket has driven launch costs down to 2720 per kg from the original 25000 per kilo that users paid for NASA space shuttle flights. The total cost of a Falcon launch right now is about 67 million US dollars. Because no hardware will be lost on a Starship flight, the only costs are fuel, maintenance, and use of the pad. 10 million or less per launch for a future Starship version, according to SpaceX CEO Elon Musk, eventually 2 to 3 million. That suggests a launch cost of 100 to 200 dollars per kilo. Compare this with NASA's SLS rockets, which will be fully expended each mission, except for the Orion crew capsules, they'll initially cost $4 billion a launch and may end up double about $2.5 billion. NASA will launch only one SLS per year, at best. Starship's capacity meant it will be able to further launch the large numbers of satellites on each mission, further reducing costs and rapidly deploying mega constellations like Starlink. Alternatively, it'll be able to carry very large payloads into orbit, as much as 200 metric tons in a future version of Starship. At its Boca Chica launch site in Texas, SpaceX is establishing what it calls the Star Factory, an assembly line that will be able to build one Starship a week, up from three a year now. With two more launch sites at Cape Canaveral, there is a suggestion of up to 44 flights a year from this location. Add in the launch facilities at Boca Chica and the launch rate can exceed that of Falcon 9, currently one every 2.7 days. Low cost, high payload to orbit, and a fast launch cadence open up new opportunities for radically different purposes, particularly when in-orbit refueling is proven. The most important role for Starship is supporting NASA's Artemis to get humans back to the moon in preparation for missions to Mars. SpaceX is developing a special moon landing version of Starship. Elon has suggested flying uncrewed Starships to Mars the year after next, and potentially crewed missions there by 2028, with his goal being the establishment of a permanent human presence on the planet's surface. Low-cost launches by Starship could also support a permanent human presence on the moon that could then establish an in-space economy and manufacturing capability based on the use of lunar resources. All indications are that the moon has substantial ice deposits in its regolith around the South Pole, where humans will land first. If the water can be used for a base and in making rocket fuel for Starship launches from weak lunar gravity, the moon will become a launch pad for exploration and resource exploitation across the inner solar system. That's more important than Mars colonization in the coming decades. The establishment of a permanent human base on the moon and the utilization of lunar resources opens up the next step in human space activities, including a construction of large space-based solar power satellites that could solve much of the Earth's energy challenges. Another option will be large commercial space platforms to replace the ISS at the end of its life in 2030. Robotic space manufacturing using lunar resources and 3D printing would create the possibility of an in-space industry that could foster technological innovation in the 2030s and 2040s. Starship's promise of low-cost and frequent space access opens up this new golden era of space exploration and resource exploitation. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.